Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to the player preview for Kyle Christie for the challenge season 35. This is going to be Kyle's fifth season of the challenge and it is a make or break season for him. Time flies fast. Kyle is now in his fifth season of the challenge. He has officially done more seasons than Landon ever did. So he's not a rookie anymore. He is a total veteran who is getting paid a veteran fee for appearing. And MTV needs to decide whether he is worth his paycheck. As important as Kyle has been the past few seasons, his character is becoming a bit stale. I'm pretty sure MTV could find a, a British dude who's tall with tattoos and hooks up with chicks. It's not that hard to find. Kyle needs to step up as a competitor to show he deserves his spot and he needs to continue being involved in drama and relationships. Now onto the legitimate preview where I'm going to start to break down what Kyle's game for season 35 is going to look like. As a physical competitor, Kyle stands at about six foot tall, 180 pounds. One of the biggest surprises about Kyle is he's only 27 years old, which is ridiculous. I mean, I thought he was 30 when he started the show. So the fact that he's been in our lives for three, four years now, and he's only 27 is wild. Moving on to how he does physically in the challenges, Kyle is competent. He is slightly above average, and I think a slightly above average is a good descriptor for his entire challenge career. In terms of cardio, he was able to run the Vendettas final without any major problems. In terms of raw physicality, he beat some ass during World of the Worlds 1. And his swimming ability is, again, slightly above average. He's not the worst swimmer. He's not the best swimmer. But he's better than the worst swimmers by far. The big thing with Kyle in terms of daily challenges is the fact that he himself is afraid of failure. And because Kyle is afraid of failure, he'd rather not even try his hardest. He's the guy who often would rather be the person who cracks jokes and who you want to drink with rather than the try hard. He essentially acts in a way where if he doesn't put himself out there completely, he can never fully get hurt. However, on War of the Worlds 1, when Polly and Carl were completely targeting him, we saw an engaged Kyle who was killing the daily challenges, who was fighting in eliminations because he didn't want to give them the satisfaction of eliminating him. When we get an engaged Kyle, he is just as good as some of the best players in the game except we frustratingly never get that version of Kyle. Hopefully his loss on War of the Worlds 2 and his hate for Rogan can light a fire under his ass and we get an engaged Kyle who can actually maybe win. <laughs> Moving on to social and political game, Kyle is an incredible theoretical social player. He establishes friendships really quickly. He's fun to hang out with, but his problem is he needs to define the lines of his friendships where he needs to have that number one and number two ally. He can't just be friends with everyone. Last season, Joss and D, his friends, voted him into elimination because they had to make a game move for their alliance. Kyle needs to actively play the game. Being friends with people isn't playing the game. He needs to be active socially and politically and make moves. If he doesn't do that, then he's just going to lose early again this season, and we might never see him again on the show, because as I mentioned earlier, it's a make or break season for Kyle. And again, it boils down to the fact that Kyle needs to be engaged. He needs to try his hardest. He needs to have learned from his experiences, because he is an incredible social threat. In theory, he makes friends very easily. He hooks up with girls instantly. Kyle could be the puppet master of this game, but it's whether he's learned. And if he just plays the same game over and over again, then he's going to be out of the challenge. And then moving on to the next category, which is eliminations. Kyle is really bad at eliminations that involve more than one step. He is good at the raw physical headbangers because he doesn't have to think about anything. He just has to fight. But once you add extra steps to the equation, he really gets his mind going the pressure sets in and he falters. It is sad to see, however, at least Kyle does have the bragging rights of he beat CT in a Paul Russell type elimination, which not a lot of people have. And next is, can Kyle win this season? I'll say this, Kyle is my dark horse favorite to win this season. When I look at this season 35 male cast, 
Jordan is outright the favorite. He's better than everyone by a big margin. But if he is out of the picture for any reason by the time the final hits, you look at the rest of the cast and the three most well-rounded players other than Jordan are West, Bananas, and CT. Three men who are in the decline of their challenge career. After that, the only other two men to have successfully run a final are Nelson and Rogan. We still don't know if Rogan can win an elimination or an individual daily challenge. Those are big question marks. And as much as I love Nelson, he finds ways to lose. So in a world where Jordan is eliminated or disqualified or injured, Kyle could win this season from out of nowhere. It's not unimaginable. And even after that semi-impassioned rant of why I think Kyle could win, I could totally see him going out first. It's just whether or not he's learned from his past experiences and whether he takes advantage of this kind of weak male cast. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. If you can, please like and subscribe. Uh, thank you very much. Again, I hope the quality of these improve over time. We're going to be taking a journey with these player previews. Thank you very much.